Hello everyone and welcome back to Steel Division 2's Tutorial Marathon. This is video 3 and we will be looking into AT guns emplacement and also if we can some air um, airplane. <coughs> now obviously we're playing against the AI so I can't make anything I want or I can't make the AI do things but I created a deck for the AI to spam a lot of stuff. So, uh, well, let's say you got a map like this classic one here. I think this is Orsha or Brest. Either way, um, you have a small forest like that. So, obviously, maybe you don't want to bring uh, expensive AT guns or big AT guns. And we have three sizes of AT guns here in the tab up there. Small, medium, large. And by large, well, we have larger here. So this is heavy. By large, I mean, like, tremendously more powerful than the, the mediums. So maybe you don't want to bring a large heavy or even a medium AT tank in a position like that. You would want to bring a small anti-tank. And maybe one or two should be enough. So let's say you would put one maybe, you know, right here. Try to make it so it has a close range. You see the line of sight goes to 1000 meter. Although the line of sight in this game is kind of broken, it could go to, to much, much more and you just don't see it. But either way, um, here is a good spot. It can shoot anything down this road at close range as well. So close range, it's going to do a maximum 75 mil penetration. But, you know, the closer you are, the better it is. And then you could bring maybe another one, uh, you know, just here <coughs> for safe measures. Um, you could bring one here as well um, in case the enemy kind of rush through. But I think these two there is going to be good just enough. Plus bonus, if there are some Aftraks coming down this road, you can see that this one's going to be able to kill the Aftraks. So you never know. They could be small recon vehicles coming in here, half tracks. They could be, you know, anything really. This guy will be able to take care of them. And most small AT guns will have AT shells with them. So that's going to be good for infantry support as well. Um, now, in this case, all of our AT guns do have AT shells. Um, some of these don't. Actually, sorry, I'm drinking my coffee. Actually... I think all AT guns have AT shells now. It, it it they didn't used to be, but anyway. So this would be a good placement for AT, uh, and then as I taught in my previous video, we would want to put some CQC units down here, uh, right there, and uh, some throwaway units to go with the CQC. Maybe here to protect the AT guns at the same time. So, you know, this would be a an average uh, deployment here with good AT position, positioning. Now, maybe you would want to put a medium tank, you know, along these hedges. Um, like this. Now, you never know if the enemy could, like, the enemy could come out this forest. It, he could come around here. Uh, you could get some side shot here as well. So if the enemy brings a tank here and that tank is shooting at your infantry or whatever here. And obviously this AT gun here is hidden. You can see by the green arrow it's going to be in green cover. And this guy shoots a side shot. And then it can destroy you know any tanks. It could destroy a tiger. It could destroy a panther. It could destroy anything, right? So even a king tiger at... This range on side shot from a King Tiger could actually destroy it. So, it's good to put your AT guns in uh, V formation, what I call it. Um, but basically, you want them to cross shoot and try to get some side shoots on, on, some, on some stuff. You could put an anti-tank gun here as well. You could, you know, get anything that crosses here, especially recon vehicle that might venture. And then you, you try to keep the, the medium and small AT guns for ambushes and, and flank shot. And then you keep your large, your, uh, your, uh, yeah, your large pack 40 for frontal assault. So you would put a pack 40 here because anything that comes in the front here, especially at this distance of 1500 meters on um, that pack 40, 
will destroy them head 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 face so large AT tanks don't be afraid to use them in a front engagement medium and small ambushes and side shot would be best Oh, I don't have machine gun in this deck. Okay. Yeah, that's because I I did it just for the shits and giggles to to teach about AT positioning, and then now uh, if you look at this here, where would you put your AT guns? Try to think for a second before I tell you the answer. You got enemy coming from this road, then you got enemy coming from this road. So that means the enemy will arrive from here and here. Where would you want your AT guns? Would you use small AT guns, medium AT guns, or large AT guns? Now, the correct answer is a combination of all three is possible here. You could put a large AT gun here for range and frontal uh, shooting. You could put a small AT gun right here for flank shooting here. And also to take care of, you know, maybe the enemy will have recon vehicles coming in here. You know, anything that might want to venture around here. And that is within the 1000 meter range, you could put a small AT gun here. You could put a medium AT guns here. Or a small one as well, but the medium will at least be able to shoot down over there. You could put a small AT gun right here, coupled with another small AT gun right here so that they cross shoot. You could put a heavy tank gun here as it looks down the, the road. So, you know, there's a lot of possible positioning here and they're all pretty great. So we're going to put a large one here. We're going to take a medium one right here. <coughs> And we're gonna take two small ones. And I'm personally gonna put one small one there. And I'm also going to put one small here because in case there's something coming down this road, I want my AT guns to get them. Now, I kind of forget to put machine guns in that deck, but if I would have machine gun, machine guns would have accompanied these guys. So they would have been at least one machine gun, you know, here. So they can shoot at things there. They would have been probably one machine gun. Um, maybe here. Uh, they would have been one machine gun maybe here. They would have been a machine gun here most likely. Uh, maybe even a machine gun there. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of places you could put machine gun. But do put machine guns because you want to protect your AT guns from small arm fire. All right, so now we're gonna put some Elsa soup in, and we're gonna start the game just to show uh, what how effective the AT guns are. Elsa is not gonna be useful here. We're gonna take some uh, Grenadier DP because they have the machine gun. Uh, Infantry machine gun goes to 750 meters. Always check the range of your units before you deploy them. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be good. And then we got our, our recon. So where could we put recon around here? Um, you could put it in the church here, but then it's probably going to get destroyed by the enemy before it arrives. You could put a recon here. Um, that will gi give you a good indication of if there are enemies in these houses. Could give you a good indication of uh, tanks or vehicles coming down the road. And by coupling a recon here with a anti-tank gun here, then you know you can better detect stuff for him to shoot at. You could put a recon right here that will allow you to see a lot of stuff. You could put a recon with your pack as well. 
So, you know, we are going to put a recon here with the pack. We are going to put a recon here. These guys. So now, uh, with these two recons, we're going to have a good view of what's happening here. Um, and we're going to put a recon into town over there as well. So there you go. Let's start this. Ah, oh, good Christ, that is some good fucking coffee. I use these, um, the company is called Silk, and it's a creamer. Um, actually, wait a second, I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, so it's Silk, and it's uh, almond for coffee. Uh, vanilla and it's oh man it makes your coffee taste so fucking good you don't put a lot of them but there's there's only four grams of sugar per tablespoon so it's not that bad and um, I used to drink my coffee black all the time and I do have a pretty expensive machine for coffee and I grind my own you know and um, all of this and I used to really prefer black but um, I don't know recently for work I've been using these anyway So I don't know that tank is shooting at uh, these guys. Unfortunately, now that Pike 40 has been shot by infantry. So now it's suppressed. It's not going to shoot really great. We're going to retreat it. We're gonna use these recon vehicles as well. So let's press pause for a second. These recon came in with the vehicles, so now, as soon as the infantry is loaded, that makes extra recon for you to use. So you can try to get, you know, we'll get here, and uh, now, right here, and now we can see what's gonna come down this road. Um, this dude is probably gonna go here and now we'll have a recon for you know what's happening here and um do we have more recon yeah there's a recon here uh maybe we could even try yeah no that's gonna be dangerous i guess you know we're gonna do this here now you see that pack is giving some support to our infantry um, here was a uh, pretty much a disaster. Yeah, the so one thing you want to do with your your AT guns is you want to remove unless they're small AT guns. But for ambushes, you definitely want to remove the. Uh... Now you see this B810 is being shot by two AT guns, so now it has to show its side to to one of the other. And there you go. Now it's been easily dealt with. This is a good way. Now we we've retreated this pack forty from uh, his position, and it survived. So it's a, that's very important. Now we're gonna wait for him to be less stressed, and we know there's a tank over there. Oh, look at that now. So the enemy is bringing some troops there. So we we're, we're gonna do the same. Uh, let's target the uh, recon. Now he's been shot by fire, so it's uh, he's been shot by HE shells, and there's fire in the forest. So now he's gonna have to move, and that's uh, that's annoying, but it happens. Okay, now this guy can come back to the front line. Try to always aim for the recon unit. It's not going to survive that. Let's try to make it fall back. It's probably going to die either way, but uh, this guy too. Well, most. This 
guy will most definitely die now. Unless they go here. Uh, you don't want the medium tank engaging these guys, so we're gonna put on return fire right away. Right, HG shells from the medium one. Engaging this Talki, giving these guys the advantage. Verdacht, es hat mich erwischt. Feind direkt vor eigener Stellung. Oh wait, didn't we have a Pack 40 coming here? What happened to it? Okay, I guess not. Alright. Wir haben Ausfälle in unseren Reihen. Beschütz, Einsatzbereit. Alright, only one health. Will it live? Will it at least kill this unit? No. Oh, maybe I will actually do it, yes, for sure. And then I guess we're gonna hide it a little bit better. These guys are probably gonna try to shoot at me, so I guess we're gonna redirect our attention here, maybe... Well, we'll see. Find direct for eigener Stellung. Taxi bereit. No, it doesn't look like it's seeing us because these are tanks, so their they, their recon ability is not that great. <clears throat> You can see how the good tank placements were really useful here in this uh, in this deployment. It did cost a lot of points though, so you, you need to worry about the points. And uh, something else you want to do with your with your anti tank, uh, apart from removing the HE, is also removing the APCR. Um, APCR is going to do great damage to tanks that you aren't supposed to do great damage to. But if it's close range, if um, if you don't really need the APCR, it's best to remove it. So always just keep the AP shells. And then if you notice you need one or the other, um, then do it. That's for your expensive stuff. Like the Pack 40, you don't want to waste this for infantry support or stuff like that. Um, but these guys, you know, it doesn't matter really. Now, both of these tanks are going to shoot, and he's going to get a sight shot and kills it right away. We are going to engage like this. And then I mean, these are... Um all right, these are the bombs. Okay, yeah, I thought they, they were rockets. Bombs are great to take care of any tanks. HE will do damage to tanks, so you can deal with them that way. There you go, dead. Now this one is heavily suppressed. It's gonna get shot down by the Panzer IV, two star. Probably die. Okay. And this is how you deal with it. Now we're gonna put, uh, now the district has been taken care of, we're gonna put these guys with the Pack 40. And now that our planes are safe, you wanna evac them. Let's retreat back, we don't wanna engage, uh, Two versus one. Panzer, halt! Marsch! Aber achten Sie auf unsere Flanken! Nice. So let's not forget here that with the Panzer trees you have like 81% accuracy with ha with them having them two stars. So these are, they are going to take care of business. Okay, next thing on our menu. Mm, apart from my excellent coffee, um, we 
are going to... Well, actually, you know what? I'm just going to use some troops here. But we are going to talk about the anti-air. <coughs> here we have the small anti-air, the 20 millimeter. We have the slightly bigger than small 20 millimeter. These are armored vehicles. Um, we have the medium anti-air. And we have the large anti-air. And then we have the heavy anti-air. Heavy anti-air are good because most of the time they'll come with ammo trucks. If you if you select it, you need to manually select the ammo trucks in the division um, choosing stuff. Um, but yeah, so small anti-air are great. They're I, Right now, they're very, very great because you have... Uh, they're cheap. You have lots of them. And they are actually useful. They used to suck. Now, now they work pretty good. So... Um, so you can safely use them nowadays and um, and feel confident about not being a waste of point. But then you also have the uh, slightly then better... Ah, oh, there you go. Before dive from these guys. You have the slightly better um, anti-hair that in phase A you could absolutely use these with confidence. We're gonna put our tank here just so that it, it's hidden. And it's going to be able to, to pick off the... Uh, that is a dangerous engagement here. Usually you don't want your tanks engaging one by one, but uh, anyway, right? Sometimes you have to, but it's an uh, unnecessary risk for sure. Okay, so you see now these are the Geppards, they're pretty good because they're 20 mil. Uh, if you double vet them, you got 3 availability and I mean 20 mil double vetted is pretty good, especially in two of them together, but 3 of them together will do some damage. Now, what happens here is that um, after you shoot with them, obviously you need to move them around because uh, they're easily destroyed. Um, by enemy artillery and artillery will try to get your 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 stuff now that you've got some anti hair you can safely bring your fighters to the field and you ideally you would have at least you know one fighter roaming the sky here in your area so yeah, one fighter roaming the sky here so that they're readily available to shoot stuff. Let's put a good use of a heavy. Let's put spot for sale. A good use of a heavy anti-tank would be well. Actually, I should have put it here. On, uh, on this map here would be good because if the enemy pushes you over, um, if the enemy does like he does here and keeps coming here, uh, threatening your anti-air or your support units here, well, you've got a 2k range anti-tank that will do some damage. Uh, it doesn't have any veterancy on it, so obviously, unfortunately, it has 45% accuracy. But it's a big, big AT there. Uh, you use it for its long range. One good use for it as well, since we do control this area, would have been to put it here with a recon. And Jesus Christ, here you can shoot almost anything. Coupled with uh, good anti-hair would have been great. But let's focus back to here again. Um, so yeah, now that we have our anti-hair, you can safely bring a plane here and He's going to get to the target much quicker than starting from the spawn. And if you do have multiple fighters, you can also, you know, put one here. And then now you have two. So if a fighter comes for you, well, first of all, he gets shot by your AA. But then you got another one on his tail. And, all, and the only one you need to uh, micro is the one that's not being, uh, it's the one that's being chased. And then you need, you know, to move him around and hope for the best. Yes. You see how this pack 40 would have died here if we had let him get shot. We 
we used the fallback uh, button instead. It survived with two health, and now it's been shooting tanks ever since. Uh, we're. Uh, we're actually gonna put our flag here for safety purpose. We're gonna use some tanks on these dudes. I mean, some uh, some bombers. Now you can queue orders with airplanes too, just in case you didn't know. So when you when you select bombers to attack, like these guys, you select it to attack right away, and then choose the place where you want him to retreat. So attack him, then retreat there. Well, it's not going to do it because it's a bug, but anyway. Right. And so by choosing where you want your airplanes to fall back, uh, there's a better chance for you to survive. Uh, I have my AA here, so in the best of world, I would have actually told my my um, my bomber here to retreat on this side rather than this side here, because by retreating here, obviously enemy planes following it will will get right on top of your AA. And um, <coughs> and uh, so that's it. Actually, right here is good. Uh, now we're on another kill from the back 40 here, doing great job. Now he's, now he's gonna die. Yeah. Now there's a lot of fun. A lot of things coming here, and we don't have an answer to it because we don't have 18 troops. Verdammt, es hat mich erwischt. Connect with the ACR. It's gonna help this dude though. Uh, anyway, okay, so these guys took care of that. And uh, anti air. Let's talk about anti air. Um, most of the time, you would want small and medium anti tank. Anti, uh, anti air. You don't need much more than these guys to help you out. Anti air are not there to destroy enemy planes, although they can certainly do that. They're, that's not their main purpose. It's there to deflect the enemy air from coming to you. So, what you want to do is get a lot of them a bit everywhere, and then you can use your airplanes and retreat your airplanes safely. This will allow your planes to survive the battle. But. You could also take these heavy anti-air. Uh, the SDAKFZ I wouldn't recommend too much because it's fragile. Um, but you can certainly get a Flak 88, which we will get. There's a lot of there's a lot of tanks coming here. I'm gonna hide my Flak in two houses. I don't have any AT infantry. Try to always get some AT infantry with you. Shoot, retreat, shoot or kill actually, so we're gonna remove the APCR, we got 25 seconds to kill it. Okay, now we're gonna retreat, we don't wanna engage these guys. Survive. So we are going to retreat around here. Either way, we do have uh, big guns around here. We Project have our tanks coming as well. There you go, these guys starting to engage. Now we've got them from all three flanks, that's going to be easy to destroy. And I hope you understand how we shouldn't do that, the, what the AI is doing here. I see a lot of new guys doing that. And it's just bad. You Stop sending your tanks alone. Uh, I mean, you may laugh at that, but a lot of players actually do that. I'm going to remove my guy because I don't want him to get bombed. Down a little bit. I did give a lot of airplanes to my opponent. Uh, I'm not sure why he doesn't use them. I would have shown some uh, 
some Bit stuff. Anyway, so uh, anti-air wise, we could use a uh, heavy anti-air and we could use it right around these parts here. Let's do this. But there is a danger to use the to using these guys so close. I mean, here we're gonna use it in an anti-tank, anti-air purpose fashion. So if the enemy brings troops to this, we have more firepower. But it's gonna be easy for the enemy to use mortars right here and then kill it. So be aware of that. The enemy can always kill your stuff. The enemy can always kill these guys pretty easily, uh, so yeah, just be aware of that. Now we are going to take back our lands here. Okay, also another thing, when you deploy these 88 millimeters, you want some small caliber anti-air around these guys, because also, not only will they be the subject of artillery and mortars, they will also be the subject of planes. And it's very easy to destroy an 88 millimeter with planes. You get one, two, three fighters, two fighter bomber, you know, you amass your planes as the game goes on. You amass your um, you amass your plane as the game goes on. Then you deploy one fighter there, one fighter there, one fighter here. You deploy them beforehand, and then you bring your fighter bomber, and then you take all of them, and then you tell them to attack, and then they'll attack at different angle. Try to get them all in the line so that they don't retreat. But then the enemy AA will shoot these guys first. And then they'll have to shoot these guys, and you know, you understand it's just gonna be a bother for them to actually, you know, do some um, some good AA. And then you will shoot them once you hit target. I've killed lots of um, 88 millimeters like that. And don't forget that HE is your friend here. HE will destroy enemy tanks, but then also. Gives, it also gives them a lot of suppression if it doesn't destroy, but uh, it's already been damaged. And now it's gonna aim really bad because it's suppressed, and then there you go, it dies. So, you know, don't forget. If you deploy units with. Um, Ammo trucks, I've seen a lot of people do that. If you deploy units with ammo trucks, move that truck away from it. First of all, you don't need the trucks to constantly supply your unit. Uh, it has 44 shells and 18 AP shells. Wait for them to get to zero before you 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 reload them. Because you know what? Probably they'll die before they even get to zero. So don't. Save your ammo trucks, bring it somewhere else. And leave it for artillery or something like that. <coughs> now we're gonna move some smaller caliber AA a little bit over the map. This, sh this should be good. So far. 88 already doing some damage here. Now. This is a good way to attack. Now, if you're going to attack a town or something like that, and you clump all your infantry together, they're most likely going to get all suppressed by the same bombs. I do that myself often. I mean, in the tick of the action, <laughs> you you just like go 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 go. You do that. But and let me take a sip of coffee. Oh God, that's good coffee. Good water. <coughs> okay. But if you actually have time to think on your feet and to, to, to plan something, then do it that way. And first of all, look how cool it looks like. Tanks, infantry everywhere. It makes for great replays, great video. And uh, yeah. 
But anyway, um, then you're gonna try to move, you could, you know, just all click them and tell them to attack, but then they'll all converge on the same area, so try to, you know, try to tell them to attack, or you could get tanks to follow the infantry, and then get the infantry to move, and like this, the tanks, they won't go further than your infantry, and that's always the thing. And then you see, I told my tanks to follow the infantry, then I tell my leader to follow the tanks. So this will lead to a good, uh, good assault overall. And then you got to be careful the tank to follow enough to support. So sometimes you've got to manually control these guys. And then you also got an airplane there. There's Sinuba. You know, like you attack like this, it's going to be very hard for the enemy to actually do something. Um, and this is how you attack. Now, yeah, your tanks can die one by one. We're, gonna, we're actually going to stop them in the end of the forest. While they're protected and hidden in the forest. This guy is causing us some problem. We're gonna bring some air into it. Especially the enemy is not bringing in. Actually, we lost our defense. Let's uh, let's bomb this one instead. Let's have some airplanes around. It's gonna be hard. We could put some AT guns right around here as well. Right, these guys are getting shot by our support troops. Hiding in houses, these guys are gonna get side shot. I'm guessing. And uh, uh, because of this leader, all of our tanks are three star. This is gonna be very good, very, very good. And we're just gonna do more tanks. The Infant has selected. We're actually going to attack here. So now we couple this attack with our bombers. These guys are going to damage the tanks. Actually, they outright kill them. Right. Cancel the attack. These guys in. Now that the infantry, uh, we're gonna get the infantry to capture these uh, this forest before we bring the AT guns. Uh, now, earlier we we've hidden our anti-air in these houses, but as soon as the danger is over, try to get them uh, out of there. The, the the more line of sight they have, the better it's gonna be for them. Alright, it looks like it's gonna be safe to bring our AT guns. Bring another one down this road here. I don't know why the AI is not using his air force. <laughs> I'm 
so I hope this helped. I think we've I think we circle around uh, everything. I, I because the thing is I'm looking at your comments and I'm trying to do videos on the comments I'm getting. Yeah. Um, let me just check for real. A video on anti-tank guns and how to use them. Most problem with air units. Well, yeah, we haven't seen air units much. Um, I'm going to create a, a deck for the AI. With just, uh, with just air and we'll look at that better in the next video. And remember, veterancy is always, is more often going to win against none. So it's good to have veterancy with your tanks. So we got more here. We're gonna do an all-out attack with, uh, actually, with Ersatzstufen coupled with Pioneers. Because cheap infantry is always good to use. our own but you know, whatever. <laughs> this is for the video purpose all right that's that's bad what I just did here so uh, I mean this is for the the, the, the video but uh, okay and now we're gonna get the troops to unload here this guy's there just for the sake of it And there you go. You've won the game. Congratulations. Good AT placement in phase A is always key for survival. Get lots of them and don't don't necessarily rush with these guys. You can, you can safely wait it out for the enemy to arrive. Alright, well, I hope that helped you, and I will see you for next video. We're gonna try to do it on the air, air, on air units and, uh, and all that. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Goodbye.